Hi, San Francisco. Welcome to another episode of Under SF Alternative Cultures. I'm Laura Ariano. And I'm AJ Datsanagan, and we're your hosts for this episode of Under SF. For this week's topic, we'll be covering San Francisco's skate scene. That's right, we have a great show for you guys today. First things first, let's take a look at how the skating culture became part of San Francisco. Now not a day goes by when a local doesn't hear the sound of wheels rolling against the pavement. For some it's a vexation, to others it's the sound of the city. San Francisco is one of the biggest spots on the west coast for skaters to visit. People have been skating here for nearly four decades now. In fact, the first skate shops to pop up in the city were back in the 1960s. Skateboarding originated in California where it was an activity surfers picked up when the waves were a little flat. Surfers would skate the sidewalks, driveways, and hills as if they were waves, kind of like the wavy driveways in the city. Soon after its conception, the trend started spreading throughout California and soon throughout the nation. The skate scene quickly took over large cities such as New York and Los Angeles, to name a few, but San Francisco seemed to stand out compared to the other cities. San Francisco's never-ending hills, wavy driveways, and architecture makes everything look skatable and are essential to many skaters, making it the legendary concrete jungle it is today. The city developed several skate spots over the decades. Skaters came from all around the world to experience the ledges around the Embarcadero, to the banks of downtown, down the hills of Noah Valley, and through the driveways in the Sunset District. They left their mark throughout the city. One of the first spots where most of our local pro skaters in SF was Embarcadero. In the 80s and 90s, famous spots like the Justin Herman Plaza, Pier 7, the Ferry Building, and Market Street drew hundreds of skaters and still skate today. Legends like Mike Carroll, Rick Howard, Chico Brennis, Jovante Turner, James Kelsch, and more helped turn spots like these into the go-to places most skaters visit when they come to SF. After the late 90s, skateboarding in SF was up and down on the popularity to the outside world. Recently, skating has been blowing up in the city. San Francisco became the skate mecca and concrete jungle for anyone and everyone who wanted to be a part of the culture. SF was not the only city experiencing this popularity in skating. Skateboarding remains a popular activity in San Francisco and even has the potential to become an event in the 2020 Summer Olympics. Many even argue if it's a sport or not. But there is something a little different happening here in SF. More important than the Olympics or the legendary spots. When people think of skaters, they think of young men throwing themselves down 30 stair handrails with no helmet on, blood everywhere, and broken bones. This appears to most of society as a savage thing to do, probably not for a woman. Well, after the break, we will really see what this gender gap is all about. We even had the chance to talk to some local shredders about their stories and experiences as either a female or male in being a part of the developing women's skate scene in SF. Hey, AJ, have you ever seen a girl skate a pool, grind a handrail, or bomb a hill harder than any guy could ever do, or even you? Well, I don't know, but I couldn't even imagine you doing that, let alone me doing that. Hey, maybe I could do it. I'm adventurous. And I've seen these girls around the neighborhood, and they will prove you wrong coming up next on Under SF. I wish I was in school. If only I had a math test today. I'll stay after class. I'll clean the chalkboard. I wish I was in school. School ends, but free lunches for your kids don't have to. Find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org slash summer meals for help. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, 
Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F A S T. Fast. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. OK, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. OK. But remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Welcome back to Under SF Alternative Cultures. We left off with the women of skateboarding and the gender gap amongst the skate community. Yeah, and we decided to go to the streets just to prove this stereotype wrong. My name's Corey. I'm originally from San Diego, but I moved to San Francisco about four years ago. I got into skateboarding about two or three years ago, and it's done a lot for my life, and it's improved my quality of life, I would say, for sure. Hi, I'm Jennifer, and I started skating when I was like 21. My name is Carlin, and I'm from Hawaii, and I'm 21. My name is Jessica Kraus, and I am 32 years old. I live in Santa Cruz, California, currently right now, and lived in Thailand for the last eight years. My name is Nolan Model. I'm 20 years old. I've been skating since I was 14. Originally from Seattle, Washington, I moved to the city of San Francisco about a year and a half ago. Girls are kind of a minority in skateboarding, so anytime you show up to the park, if there's another girl there, why not be friends? Why not talk and hang out and support each other? Because most likely you guys are thinking the same thing and you're feeling the same out of touch kind of vibe. So throughout my skate life in San Francisco here, there's a lot of girls that come to Potrero Skate Park. I met Ashley, I met Corey. Carlin, and met like so many other girls that just come from other part of the countries, like girls from Venezuela. They just inspired and like help each other learn new tricks. It takes time sometimes to learn something fun, but the process is just like falling down. Like I love falling down. Like why not? It just teaches you to get up. People think it's something that girls shouldn't be doing, or it's something more girls should be doing, and it's neither. They should just do whatever they want. It's weird being a girl in skateboarding because it's like as if a guy went into a nail salon and sits down and gets a pedicure. Everyone just looks because sadly our society has like built these little roles and stereotypes that they think girls and guys should fit into and it's just become a part of the way that we live. We don't even mean to do it. You judge someone automatically based off their gender and it kind of sucks because it makes people feel uncomfortable in certain situations. You know, girls weren't accepted as much. It wasn't okay, I guess, or whatever. Like, girls shouldn't do that, or... Which is stupid, because girls should do anything they want. Like, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to do I get so tired of people being like, oh, you shouldn't do this because you're a girl, or females shouldn't do that, or blah, blah, blah. What's the difference between a man and a woman doing anything? I mean, I never thought much of it at all, to be honest, because like I said, they're just, I wouldn't see that many girls, but like, here it's like a whole different scenario with just girls shredding and actually trying, minding their own business, not doing anything else, just with their friends. There's like other locals that are just such a bad sport about it, like as if they look at it like they're bikers almost, and like as if they're taking up space or something like that, but they're actually like, they're shredding more than they are. Like they're actually being about it. Yeah, like if girls want to skate, like they're going to skate. It wasn't as big as it is now, and I'm really glad to see where it's come to, because when I was younger, it was, there wasn't, there just wasn't a scene for it. Girl skateboarding is this really cool subculture, and I feel like I'm a, really a part of something that's really awesome. 
because I know so many people just through online, like girl skaters on Instagram, it's funny, but it's this like really small little niche, like where we all kind of know each other. We've never really met each other, but we all follow each other. We talk to each other. We want to trade photos, zines and stuff like that. I could go probably multiple states in the country, like Colorado, down to SoCal, the East Coast, and I could skate with girls just through meeting them through Instagram. And I think that's so cool. It's just like this kind of international community of girl skaters that we have and we're all supportive of each other. It's like a way to bring us all together, people from completely different areas, but we all have this one thing that keeps us so, so similar. Gotta love San Francisco, Laura. Breaking stereotypes and gender bias daily. Yeah, you know, AJ, I've never really seen so many women shred like that. I definitely take back what I said earlier. I can't imagine doing this. Their skills and passion, remarkable. Yeah, I can't even travel two feet on a skateboard. I can barely manage a scooter, let alone try and do like a kickflip or anything. That is awesome. Yeah, it seems difficult. And you know, something I didn't realize is how tight knit this community is. It always seemed to me that skateboarding was a solo thing, but here are all these skaters coming together and supporting each other. Yeah, I totally agree. I guess we know that one of the reasons why the skater culture has stayed in the city. Yes, definitely. And up next is our special guest, one of San Francisco's local skaters. Stay tuned. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Is the seat supposed to be forward facing or rear facing? Did they move to a booster seat too soon? It may be too late to check when you're on the road. Fortunately, you're on the couch. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Don't think you know. Know you know. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back to Under SF Alternative Cultures. We're joined in studio with special guest Ashley Hubbard. Welcome, Ashley. Thanks for having me. You got it. Now, you're a shredder. Tell me a little bit about how you got into it, how you shred the streets. <laughs> well, I like shredding the streets, and I have been <laughs> for maybe like five years now, and I haven't really done anything else besides skate for the last like, like five years, just... I don't even run anymore. I don't even know how to run anymore. I just know how to push. But yeah, I moved here um, to San Francisco from the peninsula, so not too far, but I never had that influence in San Mateo as I did here in San Francisco with just like, it's like the everlasting like culture that has been captivating the city for so long. <laughs> and so, so who's someone that influences you? Is there like a a female skater out there, or is it like a basic Tony Hawk? What do you look forward to, or who do you look up to? This is kind of bad, but like, I don't really have like someone who I worship besides the girls I really skate with, because they're the ones there to actually like support me. Even mm -hmm. my guy friends, like we're all we're all like together to skate, so we only kind of got each other to 
really influence each other. I mean, there's like Nora, Nora who skates for Welcome. There's like Omar Salazar who like I love. Like I just there's there's skaters out there who I really look up to, but n not like my girlfriends and guy friends. So yeah. So speaking of girlfriends and guy friends, what's the difference um, between skating with a guy or a girl? What are they going to experience differently? Well, like when you're a girl and you go into a skate park, it's like walking into the boy's bathroom or yeah, it's pretty much like that. You walk in and everyone's looking at you like, why are you here? You're like, and you're just like trying to skate and you feel like everybody's watching you. And then that one awkward dude comes up to you and is like, oh, well, like, yeah, you got that. And you're like, <laughs> go over there and do what you're doing. Like, I don't, I don't need you. Like, hopefully my girlfriend will show up in a couple of minutes. Like, I don't want to talk to you. But yeah, it's pretty weird. Like, there's obviously a huge difference between how, like, Girls are perceived in such a savage, like, sport, li lifestyle, whatever you want to call it. And then for guys, it's, like, the norm. Like, when people think about skateboarding, they're obviously thinking about guys, like, not really girls. So, I don't know. So, what do you do to, like, kind of break the barrier? Like, do you, you know, tell me about, like, some of your biggest stunts or something that you're just like saying like <laughs> screw the system we're gonna do it my way or the highway <laughs> well that is kind of like the whole thing about skating is do what you want there's like diys like do it yourself like skate parks and all that stuff so i mean i don't know i kind of just just be myself and with skating like all you can do is really be yourself or you're actually like not doing it you you don't want to be doing it for anyone else just so that you can like be stronger and when people are like putting you down and stuff you just gotta <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you just <laughs> sorry you just gotta like do it and do it live and who cares who's watching and who cares who like is judging you like as long as you're having fun and you feel that adrenaline and you're like bombing down the hill and you got that grandma roll down her window and she's like what are you doing like you're gonna do you want to end up like the boys like do you want to end up like with blood and you just like turn to the that old lady and you just flip her off and you keep skating down the hill like there's really nothing more you can do right exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't think it's easy to be uh, polite when they uh, when they talk yeah, to you. Yeah, like I mean, that. I've been like hit by a car and totally freaked out on people. Like, just because I'm a girl doesn't mean that I'm not gonna react the same as anyone else. Like, I'm I I'm doing what I do and I love to do it. I wouldn't be doing it if I like wasn't having fun or like didn't feel confident doing it. So why not? Now you mentioned doing this with other girlfriends, so. Do you have like some kind of crew or some kind of team? Yeah, well, we don't, we're not a team. We're the Fogs. <laughs> it means for all you girl skaters. And it's not just us, it's, it's for everyone. It's for all the girls. It's for the guys if they even want to be a part of it. But yeah, I got like a solid crew and we go out on skate trips together and we just have fun. We turn on the music and we, we dance and we skate in front of whoever wants to watch. But if you're gonna like come up to us and be all awkward and be like, oh, well, like a bunch of skater girls at the park, ladies night, and you just kind of have to brush that off and just keep doing what you do just to prove that you don't really like give it, like give a, give a shit about it, you know? So what are you gonna do? So is Fogs like growing an influence? Like, do you have some kind of like Instagram or like do people follow you guys? Well, we have like a hashtag, just F-A-U-G-S that like hashtag and if you click on it you'll find like over like 200 or something videos of us skating and it's really awesome like I'm I want to show you guys some of it so yeah yeah we should definitely check it out Ashley has prepared something very special for us we have a clip of Ashley showing off all the girls from Fogs let's check it out
Well, we want to give a big thanks to Ashley, Corey, Jen, Nolan, Carlin, and Jessica for joining us today. Yeah, we had such an amazing episode today. Hope you guys learned a little something about skateboarding in San Francisco as much as we did. I know I'm going to have to try and get out there and do a little something myself. What about you, Laura? Yeah, you know, I might want to try it, but honestly, I'm digging the shirt. I think I could probably fit into the crew, but I don't know about the moves. Have to work up to it, but unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. We'll see you next time here at Under SF.